Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Digby. This is going to be Art of Turtle vs. Grass Game 2, part of BSL Season 11 Chobu League Group A. By the way, new season of Chobu League has started. I guess I should mention, just in case you guys are watching this in the deep future, today is April 8th, 2021. New season of BSL 12 has started. I've got it on good word that both 80s Mullet and Scarlet are participating in this season of BSL. I'm very excited about that. I actually would not be surprised to see Scarlet go deep, deep in the... Maybe, we'll see how she, I'm wondering if you have to go through Chobu League first. She would dominate Chobo League. I think she would, just absolutely. There are good players in Chobu League, don't get me wrong. But I feel like she's definitely high Hasu League contention, if not low pro... low... what is it? Go, Gosu League? Low Gosu League contention. I want to say Pro League, but Pro League's like the Korean Pro League. Anyway, upper right-hand corner, grass, blue Protoss, uh, plopping down that pylon. This is on... Uh, Eclipse, is that right? Blade Runner, BSL Blade Runner. That's the one that has these uh, interesting kind of, I'm not sure what to call these. They're, they are Lurker Morphing Inks, but they've got that arrow. They are attackable, 200 hit points, that sort of action. Art of Turtle actually going for an uh, cancel, so I missed the drone extractor trick. That's why we had the red supply for a moment, and he's going to get his spawning pool down a little bit early. One thing that you can't, and I think he's doing that in hopes of maybe if he gets an early scout off, which it looks like he's scouting with this initial drone to the bottom left-hand corner, so I'm not sure that he will. This is going to be critical. Does he see that probe? I don't think he saw that probe. So if he saw that probe, he would have had... Maybe he's going to have an idea from this. Because this is a... It's not an insignificant commit. This does slow your economy down. But if you can get those initial zerglings out and get them inside your opponent's base, you are rewarded in both distraction and scouting information and frustration from your opponent's point of view. Looks like now he's going to see that probe, so I have to assume that he he knows that that spawn is now upper right-hand corner rather than a cross-scout spawn. I guess you you know what they say about assumptions. They're bad, but gateways up. First Zealot's being produced. If that Zealot does plug the gap, he should be able to stop this, but that's initial three zergling straight out. So, and it might, I'm kind of curious, is this enough surface area? One Zealot versus this uh, with Zerglings, it, it might be close. Grast has plopped down an Assimilator. He's getting additional gas rather than minerals to kind of go for more of an aggressive economic mid-game. That drone returning, Probe waiting there, and I think the Probe is waiting to try to disrupt those Zerglings a little bit. Overlord sitting overhead is going to get a good look at all this. Cybernetic Score being planted, so Grast feeling kind of confident about it and opting instead... So interesting. So Art of Turtle rather than... Okay, now he's moving with the Zerglings. For a second there, I thought, is he going to continue the attack with these Zerglings? Or is he is he going to move them to base? Or is he going to go for the denial of the scout? So instead, he's just going to leave a single Zergling attacking that probe. And that's going to get disrupted in his own mineral line. He's not producing any additional Zerglings. But this is still going to be five Zerglings against two Zealots. And these Zealots aren't going to quite have the surface area they want to work with. Where they can just kind of sneak behind the area. So that, so basically what Grass is going to have to do is he's going to have to keep an eye on that front door. And you can see he's maybe a little bit concerned because he's already got a couple probes that he wasn't uh, maneuvering in there. So, and it looks like uh, I just managed to hear the probe die. You can see the single Zergling kill in the darkness. But Zealot moving out, trying to get a free hit. And that's exactly what you want as Grass is to engage two on one. And yeah, Art of Turtle getting caught with his pants down. And that is going to blow a lot of the advantages that he might have had. Plus there's a Dragoon being built. But what this initial build has done is, is it's forced Grass to play more defensively. He's gotten a Dragoon first rather than anything else, just to deal with Zerglings just in case. He's getting a Citadel of a Doom down. Basically, he's stuck to one base rather than going for uh, any sort of Forge Fast Expansion on the front door, which I think is actually... I'll have to double check with some other Protoss players these days, but I think it's hard to pull off on this map just because of a lot of the positioning and whatnot. So instead, Grass is stuck to one base play. Uh, single, what? Well, saw the Dragoon attack something. Where is it happening? Going after this Overlord upper left in the corner. He is going to be able to cap that. That is going to supply cap Art of Turtle and hurt him. So nice bonus there. A little tit for tat. Three hatcheries in base. So we are going to see a three hatch play from Art of Turtle. He's also getting that Hydralis den. And this is... I've seen a lot of uh, Protoss players have trouble with dealing with this as well. It's kind of the older school 2010 style. Three hatch Hydra. Uh, well, I guess, what is that? 2007? Man, might have my timing off. We're not sure. We're not sure? I'm not sure. Zealots and Dragoons pressing with only those few Zerglings that, at the very least, is going to force a Sunken Colony to build perhaps some additional units. And it might be... They might be able to get in and maybe get a free shot or two. Might be able to kill a Zergling or two. We'll see. Dragoon moving up. Yeah, at least going to get a free shot. And I thought that Dragoon might be able to do two shots against a Zergling. Maybe get a Zergling. 
but instead that sunken colony going to force the rest of these units back. I kind of like the sunken colony rather than units in this situation, because yes, it's a drone, but it's static D you kind of want in the mid-game against one base play anyway. Uh, Grass now opting, so from the one base play, opting to go ahead and take a Nexus with a bit of the map control. He did only stick to a single gateway and getting a Dark Templar out instead. So he's going to rely on, and I think he got a good read that this was, that's actually a really good read from Grass. I think he got a good read that this was in fact three hatch play. He's got his Corsair up, and between the single Corsair on and that Dark Templar and the smaller ground unit count from Art of Turtle, that's going to force Art of Turtle into more of a defensive stance, where he's not going to be able to just flood the Hydralisks out to the front. They're not going to be able to just play the map control game. They're going to have to babysit those overlords, and they're going to have to watch any sort of Dark Templar flooding out. Looks like some Zerglings. Oh, that, that should reveal some information. Able to get a probe before they die. But I believe Art of Turtle now knows there is a Dark Templar out on that field. Two pylons, or two pylons, two cannons being warped in the natural expansion. The Dark Templar moving its way out. The Corsair looking for weak spots to provide some sort of attack. And now the Zerglings flooding out of the main. I'm kind of curious what that is what that is about. Maybe uh, to provide some distraction because of the lack of Hydralisks. Uh, and to pull that Dark Templar out so that there's not uh, dual attack time. I'm kind of curious what uh, he's hoping to accomplish. Maybe a run by, maybe just to try to deny a third somewhere out here, or maybe just to draw this Dark Templar away from his main so he doesn't have to worry about the combination count with uh, low Hydralisks. But instead, he's going to end up losing this entire control group of Zerglings. Not a lot accomplished out of that. Again, so the one thing I should say accomplished out of that is the Dark Templar wasn't here on the main. There was a little bit of supply freed up from Art of Turtle. I don't think that was look, that's what he was precisely looking for in that moment. But uh, I'm wondering what happened to that. The Hydralisk is out of position to deal with this Corsair, and this is still a very, very thin Hydralisk count uh, to deal with. Knowing that there's Corsairs up in the air, even with one base, that's very, very scary. Dark Templar is going to check out that bottom left corner just in case there are units that were sneaking out. So Art of Turtle playing, I think what we're seeing here is Art of Turtle's just trying to play it really, really thin. He's just trying to sneak every last drone that he possibly can. And I think he's getting away with it, to be honest. Uh, just because Grass didn't have that second Corsair in the air uh, to really punish that. Grass is coming with, I would say, a later Nexus. But the trick is, is Art of Turtle's st still sitting at two bases. So even though it's 26, uh, 32, which is not that bad uh, as far as pure work count, he has managed between the Dark Templar air control and the Corsair deny any sort of third base. Spire now uh, going down for Ardo Turtle. I'm curious if he is just going to switch into three hatch Muta in the mid game. Two additional gateways being plopped down, plus weapons one starting to be upgraded uh, for Grast. So both players kind of going for more of a defensive economic style. I f almost sense that Grast here, especially with the smaller gateway count, has been skipping. Yeah, he's just going, okay, so now he is piling up. He's thinking about some sort of mid-game timing to run into this. And I think that might be successful against Art of Turtle, honestly. Art of Turtle has not gotten level 1 weapons. He's not gotten Lurker Tech. If there's enough Corsairs in the air, or maybe even Dragoons or an Archon on the ground, level 1 weapons being upgraded, I think I already mentioned that. Um, High Templar on the, on the field as well. Not a lot of energy on them. He's mostly been playing in kind of a defensive, this Zerg's coming after me sort of manner and instead Art of Turtle's just been sitting back and I think mostly droning although his drone count is still sitting at 29 and he hasn't been taking additional base moving forward with those Hydralisks po uh, pecking away at those Corsairs one positive for Grast is he's gotten all sorts of scouting information looks like that and I think that Art of Turtle is thinking about just rather than going for any sort of attack here I think he's hoping to just establish a degree of map control and maybe take a kind of thin third base. Yeah, so he's moving out with that drone right now. The question is, is he going to expand to the six? Is he going to expand to the upper left-hand corner? Once he clears uh, this action out, that is Speed Overlord upgrade to help deal with those Corsairs and also to hunt down additional high or Dark Templar that might be on the field. It looks like he's going to take this protected six. Not protected. He's going to take this six o'clock base, which is a little bit easier to hold, a little bit easier to reinforce. But he's going to have a lot of units to deal with. Honestly, I almost feel like once, we'll see, I think after one wave of units is produced here, Grast might just move out. He does have an overall supply count. He's checking the 9 o'clock, sorry, 3 o'clock, just in case something was snuck there. But he's got a significant ground force. A significant ground force. He needs to keep these Corsairs up because this is a lot of Mutalisks and Scourge that have snuck through. And I don't know that Grast has any eyes on this. In the meantime, he is, well, maybe he's warping in cannon. So I think he knows the Spire is existent. 
Art or Turtle being a little bit slow to move those Mutalisks in, and I think if he moved in right then, he might have been able to take a cannon out and maybe some additional forces. At the very least, what he's going to get out of this is scouting information. Might be able to pick off some High Templar, and I think that was the true, maybe the true intent of these Mutalisks is to sneak in. No, he's diving in on the Nexus. One cannon down, might be able to get the second. The Corsair is still nowhere to be seen. Looks like some Scourge trying to hunt them down, so they're boxed out, and now that main is going to get completely ravaged. Oh, that's brutal for Grast. I feel like he was actually in a pretty decent position. He's moving out with all of his forces, so he's going to have to go in for kind of an all-in attack to counter. He does have that Archon, but that Archon's a little bit too little too late. Significant probe count damage. And honestly, yeah, he might even be able to get one of these high-tech units if he um, micros it precisely well. The Zealot's moving the bottom left-hand corner. I'm not sure what he's thinking with this. Maybe establishing his own base? I'm wondering if this was a miss attack, or he just thought there was an expansion that was being placed with these Mutalisks behind it in the midfield. I feel like Rast is playing a little bit in the dark here and kind of flailing, maybe. Uh, Corsair's finally getting on top of those Mutalisks, able to get a couple free hits as they're moving across. He does, and the ball is in his, in his court, really. Uh, Art of Turtle's happy to just sit back, mack her up. That was a big win on his part. Able to pick off a High Templar, which is going to be costly. Very costly. I think the Dark Templar wandered into that Hydralisk field. I just missed it on the minimap. So no, no Dark Templar to support this. And I like what Art of Turtle is doing. He's shadowing this army to kind of keep an eye on it so he knows where he needs to reinforce and with what units. That might even be a Sacked Overlord. I think he was hoping to catch the edge of that, but that might even be to Sacked Overlord. Uh, just to make sure that he knows where that army is. He's in the red with that, is able to take out a single Corsair. Lost all of his Mutalisks for that attack, but he's a lot of Hydralisks to engage this army. And this is a very immobile army. Good size storm, catching a lot of the Hydralisks on the corner, but unfortunately those Hydralisks getting right on top. Another good size storm from the pincer movement from the left. So actually Art of Turtle able to just chew through the Mutalisks, or sorry, the Hydralisks. They were on the front and able to peel through. So he might be able to take out some bases. That He does have the Archons to, to soak up a lot of damage on this front. If he has another Side Storm, oh, can't Side Storm his own Zealots, though. That's critical. Moving, continuing to dive in. Another good Side Storm on the Hydralisks line. And he is breaching the natural expansion. He's going to have another Archon and more units flooding down. Some Hydralisks trying to provide some pincer support. But there are already Zealots there, and more units are going to be back. And on top of these Hydralisks momentarily, they're going to be boxed. Another huge Side Storm right on top, and a beautiful one where it barely hit any of these zealots on the corner i didn't even realize he had a high templar still in the field so natural expansion is breached zealots are everywhere expect another round of them momentarily they are all over the place so with the counter attack able to get the gg out of art of turtle nice play from grast nice place and i i really the the size storms the size storms were incredible there from him hope you guys enjoyed that one pretty good one we're gonna go to a game three